Get him. Get him. Get him. Ah. Well, hey everyone, welcome back to the cabin. I guess as you're looking over my shoulder right here, you can see that pile of logs. That was the two piles that was up there behind the sawmill. And I had to have a place to put them. I'm actually um, down in the hollow uh, down below where the base camp is, but I'm towards the creek in. So I've got all those stacked up there. Some of them are good, um, but uh, the majority of them are rotting. So I'll probably have to use those on my hugel culture. Um, then right here, I've got a carry-all that I actually built for the tractor um, when I was hauling wood, you know, just firewood and things like that when I first clearing this property. Um, and then I've got that 200 and I think it's 20 feet of cable on that reel I had to do something with. And then I had a load of slab wood that ended up right there. Um, but at least it provided me a place to move it to, so get everything out of the way for him. And then once uh, he's completed that, then I can actually take this back up there, stack it back up, separate it like it should be, because a lot of that is still good. And I can take that carry-all back up there and that reel. Um, and I'll have actually a place that I can start, you know, <laughs> I guess accumulating more stuff. Uh, but anyway, now it should be uh, really nice once he gets that done, because I can do a whole lot of things with it. This little road that I'm on right here uh, is a logging road that was made when we first moved to Tennessee back when I was I think about 10 or 11 years old. Um, what my grandparents did, there was original 200 acres here and they hired a woodcutter to come in and select cut timber and that's basically how they paid for this property or the majority of it. Um, was select cutting timber. Now there wasn't anything really right in this area where I'm at except this was all grass. Now I've told you that before where uh, this woodland has actually grown up in the last 50 years. Um, but it was on top of the mountains back there uh, where they would actually cut those trees and then they would, uh, a lot of them they would uh, run them off the ridge and then bring them across through roads like this or other roads that were built uh, on the property. But this one actually ran parallel with the creek all the way to the barn, which uh, was sold many years ago. Um, but yeah, so it's a good thing that I actually had this to be able to transport that stuff. That would have been really hard to do because, you know, this has made it quite level where most of it is like what you've seen me working on before. So transferring all those logs, especially on those forks, you don't want to be leaning uh, any more than you have to. But, uh, yep, this is the old logging road still being used today. I know that you have probably been, some of you have probably been following along, uh, clearing this property back behind the sawmill for the new buildings. But as you can see, uh, I've got a couple more. These are actually poplars right here that I'm gonna to have to take out. A few small six inch on down over the bank right there. There's a crooked pine right there that's leaning. I'm actually gonna take it out. Um, there is this crooked pine you can't see on this side of the camera. There's a cedar here that's probably gonna to have to come out and then that one's about six inch. Anyway, those are gonna to have to come out uh, for me to be able to have the area that I need and then once those are done I'm done and I'm just waiting on him so I think it may be another week or so and he'll be here but uh, it was a really it was a big push to try to get all this done but um, it was managed you know um, to be done and those forks helped out a lot that was on the tractor because I transferred all those logs down there in a big hurry which like I've said before, I didn't mind the straps. Those things cost a thousand dollars. I think I would have rather had the thousand and did the work. But uh, they did come in handy. Um, they're already paid for now. And I'll probably end up using them in the future on the logs. The only thing is, is I don't have as much of a um, delicate way to set the log on the sawmill now since it, that I have the forks where I had that with, with the bucket. But uh, anyway, we'll work it out. 
but this did become the priority and had to be done uh, really before anything else but uh, it's about to be wound up you know I'm not really sure if I actually shown you some of the stuff that I've got hanging on the wall up here on the front of the cabin but I thought I would um, this is actually a pitchfork um, you know there's a antique dealer that's not too far from here and they really have great great um, prices on what they're uh, reselling so uh, this right here I was able to pick that up at a really nice price this right here is a pair of actually ice hooks but I got it so that I can actually it will work on the logs too to be able to carry those um, as long as they're not too big you know where I can just pick them up by hand and maybe drag them out of the woods this right here is um, uh, actually was a carpenter's tool it actually had uh, on this end right here it had some claws and I ground them down and made something to basically hit with and then the other side is the axe and then right below that actually sitting on the ground is basically a chamber pot or a, a peat pot um, that I've actually had for some time and uh, I actually had a few comments on that hey like, where did you get that people that's actually used them before but where'd you get that huh? I had for quite some time then over here on this side I've actually got an uh, inch and a half hand auger uh, I don't know if a lot of you people have seen these before but you probably have um, but I've also got a one inch which is right here um, I would still like to have a, a three-quarter a half and then an inch and a um, inch and a quarter yeah um, I basically have my fro right here which I need to sharpen but uh, yeah that's what you call a fro this is actually held this way and beat with something like this right here to actually split with um, they used to make shingles out of these you can you know actually split wood up uh, with it as well and this of course is just a a dogwood mallet that I had made and then over here I've got a an old level I've got a nice carpenter's handsaw and then I keep my boys axe hanging right there so that my tools are handy whenever I need them then I just come and grab them and take off now a lot of this stuff I'll probably transfer to uh, the workshop whenever I get that done but I'm saying that probably be um, almost two years before I can get in there because it's going to take a while just to build the sawmill slash kiln slash storage area um, you know we've got we've got a lot of work ahead of us and um, nothing but time so y'all be sure and stay tuned because that's going to be a lot of fun putting those three new buildings up back there but uh, a lot of these tools are going to be used well guys I thought I would take a little bit and try to answer some of the questions that you've had um, you know a lot of the different comments that we had was basically about the flooring and you know what a good choice it was and so forth um, but they you know had stated that when they got theirs that maybe they didn't have that particular type pattern or whatever but a lot of the comments saying that um, they've had theirs for years had dogs on them and they still look good so uh, I'm glad to hear that another comment was about the dogs were upstaging me with their antics I guess uh, goofing around and playing that they're fun to watch so maybe I'll just start <laughs> filming the dogs <laughs> but I thought that was kind of funny um, let's see uh, one of the guys also commented here uh, we need it uh, in an email that way we can keep a record of it but uh, think said that he did get the saw that was sent to him one of the winners of the saw um, anyway let's see another comment was good morning uh, the flooring is going to look good it says we were at 30 degrees Fahrenheit this morning around 5 a.m. north central Texas uh, weather forecast saying Friday uh, will be around a record-breaking 80 degrees Fahrenheit well that's a big change um, but north central Texas uh, I wonder whereabouts that is um, I lived in the panhandle for about 10 years 
we considered that northwest Texas, but actually it's not. Anyway, um, let's see, what else? Another comment was, don't talk while you're looking away from the camera. Sounds like you have a bucket over your head. Well, you know, sometimes that just happens because um, you get to thinking about something, you're talking about something, and I've been basically just trying to relate to the camera as a person standing there beside me. So, um, you know, with someone else this close, we'd be having a conversation and naturally you turn your head. So, I know that that may happen sometimes on camera. I do apologize for that, but, um, you know, I can't, can't, it's hard to remember everything. Um, but anyway, I think for the most part, you know, I try to listen to the audio uh, before the video goes out because I'm the one that does the editing and uh, sometimes I have to increase audio. So there may be a section where I had forgotten to do that. But uh, at any rate, um, yeah, I thought I would answer that. So let's see. said that I needed to throw a ball in a very small line to place a longer rope on too. If you've watched me uh, pull a couple of trees down here on this channel, I've basically done that same thing, or a small stick uh, by twirling it and, you know, kind of like a, a sling and letting it go. Um, but yeah, that I agree. He, this this per person was talking about a small ball to throw over and use that small string to pull up a larger rope, which in my case I had to use it to pull up a chain because the rope wouldn't have handled the tree. It was actually broke off 90 degrees, about 40 feet up in the air. And um, yeah, I, I can't remember what video that was. That was last year though, called Widowmaker. Um, but yeah, I've actually had, I've still got one dead standing in the woods like that now that I need to take out. But uh, anyway, it does happen. Some guy commented also, I was talking about the um, lumber that I was milling up for my desk area and liking the uh, wormy look to it. Um, he said that he likes it also, that his brother-in-law was a retired forester and had some wormy chestnut. Now that would be hard to come by because the chestnut trees have been dead in North America for quite some time. Um, and they made us two end tables for their upstairs bedroom. That's really cool. I'm hoping that those maple logs will actually turn out some really nice end tables too that I plan on making. Some guy uh, wrote to me here and he said that uh, that type of flooring that I got is really nice. He said he just did three houses with it. Looks good with the mat on the back of it. It's almost soft to walk on. I thought it would be noisy with the dog's claws on top, but it's actually quiet also. So that's good to know. <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny. This guy writes, he said he can't believe that he missed one of the videos, uh, that he was six days late. No notification from YouTube again. I wouldn't count on the notifications from YouTube. I know that they have messed up from time to time. And I even remember TA Outdoors talking about at one time that they were going to do away with notifications at one point. Um, I don't know, it was a couple of years ago. And uh, I thought, well, how's that going to affect us? Of course, you know, we're not a large channel at all like they are. But, um, you know, it, it's a concern. Um, but you can pretty much guarantee, unless something was to happen to me, that on Monday there will be an outpost video. On Wednesday, there will be a review video, and on Friday, there will be an outpost video. So, if you watch it when you wake up or whenever you watch it, you know, just uh, go into YouTube right there, and it should be there waiting for you, even if you didn't get a notification. So, I'm giving you a notification. <laughs> All right, let's see. This one comp uh, guy wanted to know that aluminum stepladder that I use. Uh, it was it one of the little giant ladders and if it is he says I know they're a little pricey actually it wasn't and yet it was well worth the money it extends up to 17 feet um, and then this way uh, in a tripod mode I think it goes up to seven or eight feet um, and then you can shorten it down to about four and a half feet I think it is but uh, being able to lock it into a you know basically like a tripod or because the feet are they widen out as you hit go down lower um, that does help to stabilize it a great deal um, still I've had to use you know the extension aluminum extension ladders for certain things but 
that have I've used it quite a bit for most everything. And I think I got that from Harbor Freight for like ninety dollars. Um, so I know that they make different brands, you know, but I would say that you know any of them are well worth their money. You know, you're going to get what you pay for. Um, it might be a little easier the working the mechanism on the side to lock it and unlock it, but um, anyway, those I did pick them up for Har from Harbor Freight for less than a hundred bucks. Hey guys, well I'm going to go ahead and end the video right here. Um, it's a really nice day and I've got some work to do before um, we call it a day here today. But my son, my daughter and I, we really appreciate you guys stopping by and hanging out with us up here uh, at the cabin. Um, if you're new to this channel, be sure and go check out Smoky Mountain Outpost. That's where we do all the work. This channel is just where we sit back, have a good time and talk about everything that we're doing. Um, but we hope that you guys have the happiest of holidays um, and we hope that you have the greatest of the upcoming new year. So guys, we want to wish you a great afternoon. You all take care and we look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time. Mm -hmm.